in heaven. So no matter what man may say or do, they cannot change it. Bless your words afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. From since I was in Sunday school, coming up, the commandments was something that I personally could not have grasped. Amen? And I realize that the commandments, they are actually the schoolmaster for the church. Come on, church. Give me some words, brother. Too low. I don't want to strain my voice. Amen. So I realize that the commandments is very, very important. Not only to the Christians, but also to the unsaved. And when I came to this church, and the Sabbath being introduced to me, it was a struggle. Because the way I've been taught, is that the law has been finished away with. So then I want to know why Pastor Bernard was going with this thing. And I was very much upset. And because of that, I was also getting ready to jump on the bandwagon with the others to get out of here. Because of the teaching that was in my spirit from my youth, I did not believe in no law. And I believed that thing would finish away with. So when it began to preach and teach in the church, it disturbed my spirit. He's right here. He can tell you. It, is so, it, it, it definitely disturbed my spirit. I can remember I said one time, well, I come in church Monday and Tuesday, but not me and no Saturday. Because that's when I cut my yard, and that's when I do all my work. Mind, I'm telling you, based on what I've been taught, and I remember when Prophet Morton came here. He was the first person light the fire here. And when he said it, people like um, Sister Maduro and other people that know about that, they rejoiced, they're glad for that. But I was blue vex. I was blue vex. And I even said to pastor, I said, pastor, I'm so glad that you were here because if you had come to preach, you would not get back up here the next night. I, I, I wasn't for that. But the Bible said, when the spirit of truth is come, come on church, it will guide you into all truth. So that opened up my understanding. It was not profitable for me to argue with the pastor, nor argue with the word of God. Hallelujah. I even was try, um, try, um, threatening to bring back the keys for the bus and give it to him. Because I said many times, and I told my pastor, what I have up here, if you want that to remove, you better bring something better for, to erase this. And I can remember when I went home, I went to my bathroom, that's where my study room is. Somebody have beautiful altars in the house, but my, my, my prayer room is my bathroom, Pastor. And I sit down on the john, as they call it, with my Bible in front of me, and while flipping the pages, I began to read a little bit. And when I get to Ephesians chapter 2, 
That is what. That is what hit me, sister tonight. He said, now we are no more strangers. We are no more foreigners. We are no more aliens. But now we are grafted in. Man, that one hit me. Hallelujah. And when I read that sense of God, the scale of ignorance moved from my eyes. And there was a certain pastor that came to my house the following day and he said that all oh, like all oh, you saw Pastor Bernard leading all you astray. I said Pastor Bernard did not write the word. And he came back another night again and he said, Brother Levy, you know how we be come from and this and that's a bus. Nothing is higher than the word of God. And I'm telling you here this morning, I give God thanks to my pastor. Hallelujah. I give God thanks to him. Because if God did not lead me in this church, and this was not said, my eyes would have been still be darkened. But I give God thanks. Give God thanks. Thanks to our pastor. Now back to our word. My topic is what? Liar, liar. Hallelujah. And I want you to go with me. He said, Know by this, we know that we know him. If we keep his what? Commandments. So I was speaking to a pastor some days ago. And I asked him if he know God. If you believe in his commandments. You believe in his word. He told me those things are finished away with. And we are going back under bondage. I said my friend. I asked you a question. Do you love God? He said yes. I said you don't love God. You see, I face him head on. Because the Bible said, once you don't keep my commandments, you are a what? Liar. I didn't write the Bible, Pastor, never write it. Every one of us in your barn meet it here, and we're going to dead left it here. Hallelujah. So God is sending out a clear message to us this morning. Whether we believe it or not, or you may be on the world wide web listening, I'm telling you, bless God, once you are a servant of God, or you call yourself a servant of God, and you hear this word, and you reject it, then your preaching is in vain. Hallelujah. I had this message study a while ago. And when I heard pastor started preaching, he said, Lord, this is confirmation. Hallelujah. Because we as ministers, we as preachers, we got to realize what are we teaching the people. Amen. So when I went to Boston some time ago to preach in a revival and in the Sunday school they began to speak about the law, hallelujah, I was able to stand up and say that the law is not finished away with. That is what God is guiding his church by. And they could not believe it. They said, when you're going back, I said, next week, they said, I'm sorry, I have to go so quick. I told them, sorry too, because I want to let off something. Hallelujah. The commandments of God, they are real. Hallelujah. Just as the sun is real, the moon is real, your life is real, Satan is real, the commandments are real. And I learn it a hard way. Hallelujah. When you know the truth, when the spirit of truth is come. It will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. And because the spirit of Jude came to me or came to us one day and we grab it. We go along with it. Hallelujah. The Bible said, if you love me, keep 
my commandments. Hallelujah. And it is plain and easy to see. And to tell anybody, I don't care how big you may be, what kind of bishop you is. I said, God will use Stapleton to bring you down to your knees. If you love my God, you're going to keep his commandments. So I don't care what bishop you is, what apostle you are, what this and that you are, I don't care. Once you don't, once you're not keeping God's commandment, hallelujah, the Bible said that you're just spinning top in mud. Wrong or right, minister? Talk to me, sister Robbie. All right. Yeah. So God said, if you don't keep my commandments, no, if you don't know something, brother Peters, it's different. But when God show you, when you read it, Minister Robinson, you read it, you take your two eyes and you read it. And God give you the understanding that you could understand it. And you began to doubt it. You're in problems. What's your problem? Because you cannot tell God in the judgment, I never hear it. Because when you go to witness and you try to tell about the laws of God and the commandments of God, I know if we have enough sense, we are going to tell them, read it for yourself. Here, if you say you love me and you keep not my commandments, the Bible said that you are a liar. Glory be to God this morning. I don't care, bless God, how big your congregation may be this morning. How good you can preach. How well you can use words. How well you can cross your T's and dot your eyes this morning. If you're not keeping God's commandment, you are just wasting your time. Hallelujah. Somebody said tight, but right. Hallelujah. And God have his trumpeters. He have his orchestra in the church to blow. And let the people know what time it is. Hallelujah. Because some of us that will be gospel believing people. And we believe in the word of God. Some of us wrap up with them. And because we wrap up with them. They feel that they are saved. Loose me here, somebody. Loose me here. Come on, church. Hallelujah. You see, you wrap up with them. You know when they got this and they got that, you go between them. So they feel like they're saved, but they're not saved. Hallelujah. One man said to me, listen, you want you to this, I want you to that. I want you to go on this time, go over on the field. I want you to bless the 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 the, the, the recreate the, the festival village. I said, not me. Go look for them big preachers, not me. Hallelujah. I am not going in no field to bless no festival village. And as you don't pray, bless God, Sister Kutlin, Jan Bam Brockway. Say not me. Hallelujah. You see, once you are a child of God, once you are a minister of God, you better don't walk around and look friends. Hallelujah. I don't look no friends. Hallelujah. When it comes around my ministry, when it comes around God, I stand flat-footed. I don't care who you are. I'm not looking no friends. Hallelujah. Because God make it plain. He said, we're going to know. People are going to know that you love me, brother, when you keep my commandments. It's not the laughing. It's not the jumping. It's not the shouting. Hallelujah. But when the, when the, when the unsaved man can see the love of God in you, hallelujah, you're driving home a message to them. Because the unsaved man is not reading no Bible. The unsaved man is looking the way you walk, the way you talk, and the way you move with your neighbors. That's what they're reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. So if we say that we are keeping God's commandment, then people got to see the love of God in us. Praise the name of Jesus. When they come to our churches, they're not going to see the blocking down and the pulling down and the tearing down. No, why? They got to go and say that these people are loving people because they're keeping their commandments and they're doing what God says. I don't have time to pull down nobody. I don't have time. When I was young, my mother teach us, five of us, three boys, two girls. You know, and even though sometimes we never had much to eat, my mother said to us, listen, even though you don't got money in your pocket, keep your house clean. Walk the streets clean. Hallelujah. And that brought in our mind. I love to keep my place clean. Praise the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says cleansiness is next to what? Godliness. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And she also taught us don't argue with people. That's why I don't like problems. When I see problems, I move. I move. Because love is one of God's greatest weapon. Come on, church. Love is one of God's greatest weapon. Satan does not like the word love. Amen. The Bible said that he came on a mission. And we know what that mission is. You see, Satan don't want nothing about love. Once you can hate and tear down and bust sweat, that's what he wants. But God said, if you love me, if you love me, you can follow my commandments. Hallelujah. So when you are preaching... When we are living and we are not keeping the commandments, the Bible calls us a liar. A liar. And you know the Bible said that no liar have no part in his kingdom. So we think by when Sabbath come, we put on our nice clothes and come to church and that's it. But we got to realize that it's more than that. It's more than that. Because I realize that it's a serious thing. Because things that you used to do on Sunday, you cannot do it on, on Sabbath. Come on church, wake up. When you can wake up in the morning and fry up your eggs and cook up a storm, you cannot do that on Sabbath. When you can take your bed down, sister, and turn your bed on the side and sweep out the cobweb on Sunday, you cannot do that on Saturday. Hallelujah. And we got to realize what we, what we are doing. We got to realize because the unsaved man is looking at us. When you go into a supermarket after, after sunset and you go into one mat, and the mother to go gospel of Jesus, every other is on you. And when you buy and you come out to your groceries, Somebody's going to say, I thought, are oh, you say, are oh, you keeping this Sabbath? You know that could hit you. Man, they like when somebody take a needle and dig you with it. You understand what I'm saying? So it is important, very important to us. And this is something that we know. But the Bible says, blessed are you if you put them in what? Remembrance. So sometimes we got to store up our remembrance. The song leader said, the song writer said, Lord, remember me. Roll back the curtains of memories now and then. He said to show me. You got to show me even though I know. Say, show me, bless God, where you brought me from. And where I could have been. You see, when we sit down in the church and we listen testimonies and we look back at our life, some of us could have been in a grave a long time ago. But because of the grace of God, because of the grace, and that's why I love that song so much, Brother Peter's Mercy Say No. Mercy Say No. 
Give him another chance. Give her another chance. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You see, once you have mercy on your side, you don't have any problem. Once you have mercy on your side, you don't have no problem. Hallelujah. Verse 4 said, He who say, I know him, and does not keep his commandment, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Now tell me which part of that you don't understand. Hallelujah. We know that right now that there are people that know that worshiping on the Sabbath day is the right thing to do. Come on church. But you see what happened here now. My congregation is so big, minister. So I don't suffer out in the ocean now. And to go back Sunday morning and tell them that we are going to shift to the Sabbath. You know all the nice tax paying people is going to walk out of church. All the lawyers and the doctors that is in the church that is giving a good offering is going to walk out the church. And when you say that, Minister Jago, you may just end up with you and your family alone in the church. Hallelujah. But then I heard Jesus said, they went out from among us because they were not Wheat and tears are going to go together until the day of harvest. Let me tell you something, saints of God. If you are saved, like the Bible says, you are going to take God at his word. I could, with the, I could have been with the other gangs today. Oh yeah. I could have been with the other gangs today. But let me tell you something. When God back you up in a corner minister... Hey, when he back you up, you can't move, you know. Hallelujah. When he back you in a corner and he said to you, Thus said the Lord, I don't care what horse you're riding on. I don't care how you be in life. You got to come down to his words. He said, once you know the truth and you're not preaching the truth, the Bible said that the truth is not in you. Ministers, pastors, evangelists, deacon, bishop, whoever you are, stop fooling the people and let the people know that worshiping on the Sabbath day is the right thing to do. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor Bernard did not write the Bible. He didn't put nothing in it. Hallelujah. For the Bible told, for God told John, he said, oh, add nothing to it. I don't take out nothing from it. Preach it like it is. I said, Paul said to Timothy, preach the word of God in season and out of season. Come on, give God some praises this morning. Hallelujah. But when we come here with flimsy excuse, I cannot come to church on Sabbath because on Sabbath is when I'm going to make more money. Eh? Some folks say, I cannot come to church because I will have to close down my beauty saloon and that's when the box is rolling in. Well, what happened to the Lord that provides? What happened to him? I cannot come to church on Sabbath because on Saturdays, hallelujah, the cruise ships are in and it's three big ones out there. So I have to open up my store. Hallelujah. Because we have three big ones out there. Hallelujah. And somebody said that Queen Mary is coming in Saturday, so I got to be there for Queen Mary. The reason why I am going to stick around Pastor Bernard is because I realize he don't cut corners. 
he don't cut corners. And all the time used to say to Pastor Cox, I said, let me tell you something, brother. If you're weak, you can't lead Stapleton. You can't lead me. If you're weak, you can't lead me. Amen. Because I don't deal with weak leaders. Once I see you come weak and you're shaking and you cry for every little thing, Stapleton gone. God, army, sergeant, and captains got to be strong. For the Bible said, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of God, is God needs to be strong. I said, well, me ain't got nothing to do it because God sent me there. He said, well, that man come from Jamaica and take Pastor Black to church and broke it up. I'm talking about me members of this church over here. Jamaicans. Too. Is the Jamaican Cecil. He took Pastor Bradford Church and he broke it up. Hallelujah. But I said to one of them, What did God say about the Sabbath day? They said, Six days thou don't labor, and on the seventh day you rest. I said, We spelled that on Pastor God, and I right. Hallelujah. And I'm proud. I am proud to stand with my pastor and represent this because it is the truth. And the Bible said that the truth shall set you. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you're preaching the word of God, and you know that you got to do the right thing and you're not doing it. It just keep you, you pack up your Bible and stay home. Because you're wasting time. This ship, gospel of Jesus ship, was far gone minister night. Way out in the ocean going. Way out in the ocean going. We're gone in the Indian Ocean now. We're gone way out in the ocean. Hallelujah. But God said to his captain, listen me, brother. I want you to turn this ship around. And Pastor Bernard turned the ship around. Down the line, Sabbath day. Somebody say, hey, stop. Put me off. Jump off. Or you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church. And we stand up, bless God, and we sing some songs in church. I say, my God, I don't understand. How, why? Let me tell you, you see these songs? They're going to be big testimonies, you know, to of us in the end. We had a chorus you sing. Um, Show me thy way. So that I may walk in it. But when pastor started to preach about the Sabbath, they said, Lord, not that way. And they turn around and they back off the ship. For I ain't gonna walk in it. Hallelujah. You see what I'm talking about? It's all right to sing. But when the chorus back us up, we turn around. You ask God to show you the way. But when God show you the way now, you say, Lord, not that way. Oh, oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. So tell me what you're going to tell God in the end. If you die without receiving this, what you're going to tell him? You have no kind of excuse. We got to realize that this gospel is not a joke. People's souls depend upon it. People's life depends upon it. So if we are preaching the word of God, even though it is tight, even though it is right, and it is hard, if you got to hurt your wife, you got to hurt your mother, you're going to hurt your father, your sister, your brother, your children, brother, you better blow the trumpet in Zion. 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. At the age of 16, I came out of junior high, senior high school in Bastia, St. Kitts. And I marched into the Rehoboth Apostolic Church where I got saved or battle was in the cinema. And I was looking at one of those James Bond movies. And when the light went and rain started to fall, let me tell you, some of you have well, been saying to sing it, so you have a, a gut in singing that called College Street Gut. And those of you, minister, you know, when you hear that gut start to run, it's cares it bringing down. And let me tell you something, saints of God. There's a bridge that go over the gut to go over on the other side. And I was coming from the movie to go up the village to go to church because I felt the God, call of God on my life. And I said, instead of going home to King Street, I'm going to go to the village. And when I was going, my God, the God, I was heading for the God. And when the lightning flashed, I saw the water back up. Then I know the bridge was across there. And I walked in Rehoboth Church, wet like a chicken. I went past there as they asked me. When the invitation went out, and they say who want to be saved, get to the church, dark, no light. I said, I would like to be saved tonight. Let me tell you something. He took me up and he rolled back. He took up the thing from off the altar, the pool over there, and I began to sing some choruses. They put me in a robe and they dick me blooms in the name of Jesus. Couple minutes after that, lights come back. Yes. I am not saying I don't make some mistakes in my life. But let me tell you something. I hear the Bible say, bless God, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you. So why should I stop down there like a joy chicken? I don't have to do that. God already made a way for us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I look at Brother Den Roy. I look at him because I said, that's a young man. I see God is raising up in the church. And I love to see the way he plays music. Hallelujah. And I can't wait for him to come back on the keyboard. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But this gospel of the kingdom, it must be preached. Yeah. And it cannot be preached cross tread It must be preached the right way. Hallelujah. The right way. Six days shall you work. And on the seventh day, pack it up. Pack it up. Amen. We as believers, we ain't got no time. We don't have no rights at all cooking up a storm on Sabbath morning. We're not supposed to do it. You can't be doing that. The Bible says when you do that, you're violating the Sabbath, you're polluting it. We cannot grab our broom and turn our bed upside down and sweep out. And then you're wearing, we can't come to the Sabbath. God, you cannot do that. This is not Sunday. When it was Sunday, Minister Robinson, anything goes. You wash, you cook, you sweep, you shop, you sleep, you get up, you do what you want on a Sunday. But bless God, when the Sabbath day come, the Sabbath say, put on your hand breaks. Breaks up. Pull up your handbrakes. Turn off your ignition. Lock your doors. Go home. Sabbath. He said, if you, you take this serious this morning and you don't have the love of God in your heart, you're wasting time. I tell you to say, you know, you see me? I don't got no enemy inside here. And I look in none. You don't like me, I love you. You don't want to talk to me, fine with me. You don't want me to touch you, fine with me. I don't got to touch you. But if you're sick, I'm going to pray. 
because I don't got to physically touch you. But when I pray from my heart, I say the spirit of God is going to touch you. So I don't got to touch your person. I'm not interested in that. The Bible said that this man told Jesus, you don't got to come to my house. You just speak the word. Speak the word. You don't got to lay hands. For the Bible said, lay your hands on no man suddenly. So you don't want me to touch you. You don't want nobody to touch you. We don't got to touch you. All we got to stand here and say in the name of Jesus, be healed. We don't got to touch you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say that with a willing heart. Bless God. The spirit of God is going to move. Why? Because he's a spirit. And he's going to move because he obey. He obey and he reverence and he welcome his word. He said, my word will not turn unto me void. Hallelujah. This Sabbath thing is no joke. It's not a joke. I sit down and I, I look at it. I ponder it. I look at it no matter what try to. Let me tell you something. You know, I ain't going to lie to you. you know. I try to cut a cone corners too. You know. I try to say, but I, this thing look like it done. You know. But the Spirit of God say, you read so. I'm going to read there, get understanding again. And something start to make up. something. Say, but it's Satan putting things up here. Satan putting things up here. But when Satan bring those things, God bring the world to counteract it. Hallelujah. 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 One taxi man asked me, how do I know when is the Sabbath day? I said the Bible says on the seventh day. He said, well, Suppose the day starts on, so I say even if the Sabbath day start, if you Sabbath day start on a month, drop on a Monday, it's till the Sabbath day. Once it is seven day, on January friends. You see, people is going to ask you all kind of question to see what we're learning down here. People ain't stupid. People ain't stupid. That's why when we go to witness, you make sure you got somebody in the gang. Or in your group that could understand and run roll the message of God. Because if you send out some children to, to witness and they don't know how they know about giving out track, hallelujah. And the answer man back up. Well, what is repentance? Now they got to go run look for somebody bigger than them because they don't know. But when those children go out, they should have somebody big with them to stand up and explain to the unsaved person. You understand? Because, I, let me tell you something. I went down to Crossway Brother Matthew were living. And when I reached down there, I know that lady had to be a Jehovah Witness. And she began to talk. And when she began to talk to me, I listened to the lady. And I, I gave her a track. She said, it don't make no sense to give me this, you know. Because I'm going to just put it on the center table. And from the center table, my sister night is to the garbage. You know what I said to her? I said, when you see God, you tell him that. I done with that. That's exactly what I told her. You know, and whenever I go in, she comes and says, I'm going to read it. I said, God bless you. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Tell God that when you see him. My job is to deliver. When I deliver your package and you sign for it, I don't care what you do with it. You could tear it up. You could try the garbage. But when I step back into my office and the and they go on the tundra and they see, well, um, past this, um, sister Miss An Angelina Bernard signed for this, I good. Because I could tell my boss she signed for it. She could take the package and dump it. Don't interest me. When I give you a track and I explain to you what is in the track, and you think it better throw the garbage, you talk to him when you meet him, not me. So I am not deacon God and holding no long talk with nobody. You don't want to take the truck I said blessings on you, I gone again. I ain't got no big talk with you. Amen. Because there are people, let me tell you something, saints of God. Minister Warren mentioned things in this church all the time, and you know I prove it. People out there, they're watching this church like shock. A lot of people waiting to see the downfall of the gospel of Jesus. I tell her you don't make it. 
But the poor people them don't even know. Aim Pastor Boy not doing the driving. It's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey, that's what they don't realize. He is only a shepherd. But the man on the helm is the great captain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said when that captain talked, he said they had even the sea. Hallelujah. Even the storms obey him. Oh, come on, glory. Hallelujah. The Bible said the one that is still in the ship, he said he shall bust up. He said the tribe of the Lion of Judah, he said going to bust every chain. That's the man that's controlling the ship. Not Pastor Bernard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same one that is driving the ship. He said, when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. Oh, glory be to God. The same one, bless God, that is driving the ship. Say, look unto me, all the ends of the earth, and thou shall be saved. He's just a shepherd. That's all it is. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's an angel in the church. But let me tell you something. The real big man that he's taken um, advice from and correction from is the Holy Ghost. That's when God told him to turn the ship minister. He had to turn it. And if he don't want to turn it, God would have put another captain there and turn it. You know why? Because God set up kings and he bring down kings. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. We got to realize who we serve in. Hallelujah, he's not Pastor Bernard. If you love me, keep my commandments. When you love Jesus, Pastor Bernard, go away. That shouldn't stop you from coming to church. That shouldn't stop you from coming to Bible study. But if Pastor Bernard is here, some of you stay home. He's not God. We don't worship him. And we will never worship him. But we will respect him. Hallelujah. I heard people say to me already in this church, if Pastor Bernard is not teaching Bible study, I am not coming. Hello. It's the same God that teaches pastor. is teaching the teacher. Hallelujah. If you love me, keep my commandments. You don't love me. If you say you love me and you're not keeping my commandments, you are a liar. Plain and simple. And one thing I love about God, he don't cut corners. He tells you plain. When the thief on the cross said, Lord, when the thief on the cross said, Deacon, to the soldiers or to the other thief, why are you putting pressure on this man? This man have done nothing. Me and you were with two thieves. We deserve what we're getting. Hallelujah. But this man is an innocent man. Hallelujah. Jesus made that man a promise. He said, he said today. Today. Not tomorrow. Today. Thou shalt be with me. Where? In paradise. So we don't have nothing to worry about. We don't have nothing to worry about. That's why we're glad when we get in the open air, we let them know this is the church that God chained from Sunday to Sabbath. Well, it's nothing new now. It's nothing new. Everybody know that now. But what they're looking for now, Pastor Bernard, is to see the nose dive. You know when a plane coming out the sky, sister? Nose. Nose first. That's what they want to see. But each time an anniversary comes, it's a kicking time for us. It's a joyful time for us. Because we just win another one over Satan. We just win another year. Yes, Sister Bara, how much years now? Nine? Five? Lord, how long just to be a say nine? Five. Five and counting. Five and what? Counting. So they could stop there and talk and they could watch 
Let me tell you something. All we got to do, brother, live the life. People going to talk. People must talk. You can't stop people from talking. They must talk. Let me tell you, Sister, Sister Brett, Minister Bretwit, you wear nice clothes, they show you showing off. You go tomorrow, put on old clothes, they say you don't got none. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I was looking at the African movie some days ago. And this guy was coming across with a little boy and a donkey. And everybody standing side of the road, look at you. A big man like you got the little, ch got, um, got, 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 got your grandfather walking. And you're strong. And you up on the, on the thing. The man take down the child, put the child down. He went up on the donkey. Went to the next village. Look at your big old man like you walking. Big man like you and riding a donkey. And you got a little child walking. You cannot please people. Don't try it. Hallelujah. When God started blessing the church and he began to move under the Holy Ghost, somebody can say, what she playing? What he playing? When God starts to bless you, you live in your old house. When rain come, you got to take a bucket of water. But when God bless you and God put a concrete roof over your head, the Bible says, bless God, some people say, she's showing off. I don't wonder sometimes if we really know who God really is. The Bible says God is no respecter of person. He don't respect nobody. And God don't want us to make him God because he's God already. All by himself. He just wants us to love him. He wants us to love him and keep his commandments. And if we are not doing that, I'm urging us this morning, let us change course. Let us change course. Many times our pastors speak about the, the foolish babblings and Sabbath, talking people's business, getting involved in people's business, and talking nonsense many times. I hear pastors speak about it. Some of us, if you know we can't keep our chop shut, I uh, go home. Go home! Because at the end of the day, many sister Madu wouldn't mind me using her. At the end of the day, somebody gonna say, you know what Sister Madu said? Then Sister Ward gonna say, she said this. When Sister Ward gone back, Mother said, so none from me say it. Trouble start in the camp now. Problem and pass about that hand again. My God, he got to cast out them little fellows again. Cast out them little fellows. Amen. Each time there's a division in the church, the pastor, the ministers have to cast out those little fellows. Demons, I mean. Some time ago, we were preaching in the open air, and a young guy came up to me. He said, Minister, I need prayer. I said, You want me to do? He said, Cast out them little fellows. I couldn't laugh, you know, but <laughs> he's after I went home and started to laugh. You know? He wanna see demons and say little fellows. So if you got common sense, you know what the man talking about. Amen. And this is the problem that when we walk outside the love of God, we are only creating problem for the pastor. We're only doing that. Because when he should be home. With his one foot lap over Sister Bernard, he can't do that. He got to go pray. Ball and tears before God. For my soul and your soul. That's the job of a pastor. It's not an easy job. You think a pastor's job is just saying, I am pastor, so and so. And you come in the church with your chest up high like that. Chest up high, I'm pastor. You better get ready to pray. You better get ready to don't sleep late. You better get ready to wake up. But let me tell you something. I'm going to enjoy my sleep now. You understand? Because I know when you're on the top of the helm, Satan is going to target you because the Bible said the head is sick. The entire body is sick. When 
you have a headache, you feel it all over your body. And if Satan could get the pastor down, he coming at the church. Let me tell you something. When Satan, when, when the Pharisees want to go after Jesus, you know who they got? The disciples. Beat the dog, the master gonna come out. You understand? So when you beat the dog, the master won't come out. Hallelujah. You understand? When Jesus, when Jesus asked, heard, heard a lot of things going around, Jesus asked them, who do men say that I am? I've been hearing a lot of talks. Yes, Sister Cutelyn? Jesus said, I hear a lot of talks. But who do men say that I am? Some say you're a liar. Some say you're this and you're that. But Jesus said, okay, that's all right. They can say what they want. But Jesus said to him, who do you? <laughs> that's a big difference. Who do you say I am? He said, thou art the son of God. Hallelujah. He said, look, Simon Bodona, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. It got to be the spirit of God. So don't worry what people got to say. People going to talk. You do good, they talk. You do bad, they talk. You just can't please people. You can't please people. Eh? Can't please people. The government do this, they talk. He not do that, they talk. You can't please people. But you just have to do what God tells you to do. We got to love each other. God told us to love each other. Let's hear what verse 5 say. He said, but whosoever keep his, his word, truly the love of God is what? Perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. So you see how we're going to get to know Sister Garden is in him? When she show me love. When I show her love. I'm going to know that Sister Bernard know him when she show me love. And I show her love. And if this do not perform, I'll be perfected in us because we are the church. Christ is saying plain to an each and every one of us this morning, we are a liar. Ain't no cutting corners. Ain't no cutting corners. We are lying. But I promise you this morning, it can be someone in here this morning that really want, to, want the love of God to abide in them. He can do it this morning. You may have something in your heart against a sister, against a brother. The Bible said to come. Leave your gift at the altar. Take the individual with the outside at the back. Or if one knows where swim empty, pull them inside there and make it right. Amen. Because we cannot serve God with these things on our mind. We're not going to make it. And they've been preaching from this point for years. He's not going to make it. Sometimes I serve for Pastor Bernard because he come like the more he preaches, the worse we do. Well, I say amen, no? Some of us, the more he preach, the more he ball, the more he cry, is the worse we do. But God is going to back us up. God is going to back us up. And the reason why he use us because he take up myself. I know better than nobody in here. God is going to back us up. Some of us put a bunch of un, 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 un pressure upon the poor man of God. Pressure. Little childish thing. Nonsense. When we can go to the brother and say, brother man, look man, we are two big men, man. man. Let's get over this thing. Man. Listen, man. Sorry about that, man. You know what I mean? Let's move on. Love you, man. Love you. And move on. But before so, we keep our distance. Then we come in church next day. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. He you in the no, not one.
But all in a way singing, we're marching to Zion. We got to love each other. Stop this nonsense. We got to love each other. Stop fooling ourselves. He said, unless we ain't got this kind of love, and we don't love him, we're lying. Spirit of God says, stop. Spirit of God says, stop. He says, stop. I don't preach. Yeah, I finished. You see, I want to tell you something. When you have a preacher and the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God tell you, stop. Stop. That's when you want to cut in now and do his work. You got to stop. Anything you say that after that, you're on your own. You understand? This morning, I'm going to open this altar. That's what I'm going to open this called. altar. We can go out those doors this morning and change people. You don't have to carry We don't got to walk with a burden Burdens anymore There's, There's a light in the darkness There's a light that you Jesus is waiting Waiting here for you Come quickly now before he closed the door. Oh, 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 that's what this altar is for. I said to sing it, sing it. That's what this altar is for. Oh, 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 oh. You don't have to carry those birds. There's a light in the darkness, there's a light that's true, Jesus is waiting, he's waiting there for you, come quickly now, before we close the door, oh, that's what this heart Somebody sick, can come some foxy. That's what this altar is for. Oh, 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 oh. You don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness. There's a light that's true. Sing it, sing it. That's what this altar is for. Oh, 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 oh. You don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness. There's a light that's true. He's waiting, he's waiting there for you. Come quickly now, come quickly now, before you close the door. Oh, that's what they saw in the water.
Jesus, I give you thanks. I worship you. I magnify your name. Lord, I have done what you asked me to do. The blood is off my shoulders. Father, I pray right now for this congregation. Lord, I pray also for those that did not come. Lord God, I pray that you may meet their needs, heal their lands, heal their bodies, oh God, and strengthen them in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Clap your hands again. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Give him glory again. Now clap your hands to the preacher. God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you got to hear truth and believe it, right? Good. So God expects us then to take heed. Yes, you understand when God says things more than one time, then one needs to look into themselves and take heed. Praise you the Lord. I, I was saddened this morning as I was driving and I got a call. And somebody said to me,